Two different looks at our criminal justice system now. In a minute, we'll talk to WNYC Sarah Gonzalez, who's been comparing juveniles in prisons here with those abroad. But first, researchers at Texas State University in San Marcos found that police departments in California and Texas have failed to report hundreds of officer-involved shooting deaths as required by law in both of those states. Information on deaths like these is usually publicly available, but reporting the incidents puts them into state databases, which can provide information that researchers can use to study police-related shootings and hopefully prevent them in the future. Howard Williams is a former career officer and police chief in San Marcos, Texas. He's now a lecturer in the School of Criminal Justice at Texas State University, and he's co-author of the study. Following the shooting in Ferguson, Missouri, the shooting of Michael Brown, so many of the pundits on TV were making comments about, we don't even know how many people police officers shoot and kill each year. And I started thinking, well, why don't we? I mean, How difficult can this be? Well, I found out it was considerably more difficult than I thought. But the point is, when you when you go and find all these open record sources that give you this kind of information, you find out that the federal reporting systems only include about 50 percent of the officer involved shooting fatalities each year. Is that because a lot of the reporting is voluntary in the first place? Well, that's precisely what most of the problem is. But we then also compared those the numbers that we found against the federal systems and against the state of Texas and the state of California. Those are the only two states that have required reporting to a central authority, in both cases, the attorney general's office. And what we found was California is missing about 30 percent of the officer involved shooting fatalities. Texas is missing about a fourth of them, about 25 percent. You know, since police involved shootings captured the attention of the nation, there have been increasing attempts by researchers to look into police records and try to determine if, in fact, African-Americans, for instance, are more likely to be shot in an encounter with police. But it seems like the effort to really find the data behind this phenomenon that people care so much about That effort is really hindered here if the incidents just aren't reported faithfully uh, and consistently here. Well, that is absolutely correct. If we don't have the data, we can't possibly go back and look at what gave rise to this shooting incident. We're looking at much bigger policy pictures than just what are the police doing? Are there issues in public health we need to change, issues in mental health we need to change, education, so many different roles that affect public behavior that ultimately the police are going to have to deal with. Howard Williams, how long were you a cop? I was a police officer for 36 years. I did uh, 25 years with the Austin, Texas Police Department, and then was the chief in the San Marcos Police Department for 11 years. And did you have encounters where you had to draw your weapon or fire it at a suspect? I drew my weapon a few times over the course of the years. I never once fired a round other than at the practice range. Did you have experience where other officers had to shoot somebody or did shoot somebody? Oh, yes. And what what did those experiences tell you about how these incidents go down and and why this missing data is so important to outsiders? We kind of live with this concept of the split second syndrome. In other words, we talk about officers having to make a determination within a split second. What are you going to do? And to some degree, that's true. But again, when you go back and look at the details of a shooting, there's always antecedent conditions and antecedent action that led up to that. When I was the chief here, we had four fatal shootings, two of which uh, involved people with known mental health problems. A third one probably did, but he hadn't been diagnosed. You go back and look at what happened with them. It wasn't the police that let this person down. It was the mental health care industry that let him down somewhere along the way. Now, again, this is the much bigger public policy issue. When you look at these things, you start realizing it may be the cops who pulled the trigger who had to make that ultimate decision, but it wasn't the police who were in control of the antecedent conditions and behaviors that led up to it. And what we really need to do is find ways to keep the police from being in that position. Now, we're not so foolish as to believe that all shootings are going to go away. That's not going to happen. There, there, unfortunately, there are going to always be times when it becomes necessary. But so many of these things, if we go back and study what actually happened in these shootings, we could find ways we could have interceded. Maybe we can pick out some patterns of things that we could address better to reduce the number of these shootings. I don't think they'll ever go away, but surely we can reduce them if we study them better. But again, we can't study them if we don't have the data on them. Howard Williams, thank you for speaking with us. My pleasure.
Howard Williams is a lecturer in the School of Criminal Justice at Texas State University. He's also former police chief in San Marcos.